Good evening everybody, welcome to another video, and uh, now we're going to talk about what I think, oh no, it's not the first, this is actually I think the second YA novel on the channel that, I'm, that I've reviewed, and that is Slade. Whoops, my fingers are in the way of the title. There we go, Slade. Now, once again, we have it reversed. Okay, so it's not so bad on the spine, but on the front cover, it's reversed on camera. Oh man, as soon as I get my get a better rig set up, <laughs> the sooner that gets done, the better. Anyway, Slade was written by a lady by the name of Amanda Mar Maron Marone. I I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, <laughs> wow, that's embarrassing. Uh, anyway. I picked this up at a bookstore um, a few years ago. Uh, I can't remember when I picked it up, now that I think about it. Um, anyway, picked it up at a bookstore because at the time I was kind of on a vampire binge, so um, I read I read a lot of vampire books. I read The House of Night, I read Nightworld, I read some of the Vampire Diaries stuff. I read a couple of other books by other authors, um, including Charlene, I think it was Charlene Harris, the, the True Blood novels. Um, so, long story short, I was on a bit of a vampire craze, and Slade kind of fell right into the middle of that, um, that crazy section. Now, the story follows um, two vampire hunting families. Okay, we've got Daphne Van Helsing and her parents, and we have Tyler Harker and his dad. Now, both families converge on this small town in New England, and um, you know, there's some strange vampire activity happening there. And the Van Helsings move in and find their rival, the Hawkers, um, have also come into town to see what's what. Um, and, of course, further complicating matters is a, ch a former child star, child actress, celebrity person who ends up sort of caught in the middle of it all. Um, <laughs> um, and things are, well, they, they don't quite go according to plan. Um, this book, I really don't know what to say about it because it is a YA novel, um, and it's not the typical kind of stuff that I would read normally, but, I mean, this was a good book. I was very surprised by just how um, how dark it actually got at some points. I mean, the vampires in this book are genuinely threatening, which is not something I've encountered very often. I mean, the House of Night vampires are threatening to a point, you know, but they've also integrated into into human society, so people are aware of them. They've kind of got to look, got to live with them a little bit more so than you typically would want to. Um, and of course, we've got the Twilight novels, which have you know kind of romanticized vampires a little bit. But um, I think Dracula was pretty much the only vampire that I can think of, um, at least in terms of classical literature, that really kind of scared me. But in terms of modern-day vampire fiction, I think the only time a vampire came across to me as genuinely threatening was the um, Ulrika the Vampire trilogy. Um, I read those a little while ago as well. Um, and again, you got, you know, they're, they're threatening because they don't, they, they look perfectly normal in that series. 
but here they're described as um, like soulless um, creatures. These these creatures that are just pure evil. Um, and I mean, when you consider the fact that these things have like superhuman speed and strength, yeah, yeah, duh. Um, but yeah. So, what did I like about this book? Um, I like the family dynamic. I thought it was interesting that they decided that to make the main characters kind of uh, the Van Helsings and the Harkers, um, the, the descendants of Jonathan Harker and Abraham Van Helsing. Um, because that just kind of makes it interesting. I mean, you're kind of forced to consider, well, okay, what if the events of Dracula, of Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, what if those events really happened? Um, and um, what would the family life be like? And this kind of puts us in that mindset of what it would be like to have a vampire hunting or vampire hunters for parents. Um, so, yeah. Um, I like the story concept as a whole. It was, it was interesting. There is a bit of a religious angle that kind of comes in towards the sort of the end of the second act, start of the third act, which is handled remarkably well. Generally speaking, when you have a vampire book like this, in my experience, when you have like religious symbolism, it's generally very on the nose. It's kind of like beating you over the head. With a, it's almost like taking one of these big, hard cover English dictionaries and beating you over the head with the symbolism. Um, you know, almost like, oh, have you got the message yet? Have you got the message yet? The whole time, and it's just not necessary. When that, when it's not that, it's typically handled in a way that's very. How can I say? Um, insensitively. You know, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, it works, but only because X, Y, Z, you know. And, I mean, to be fair, I don't think that's really intended. It's kind of just, like, throat, like mocking religion when that happens, and then mocking the people who follow that, rel that religion. But here it's, it's handled remarkably well. It's not, like, on-the-nose kind of, you have to believe this specific um, thing or you're, you're crazy or whatever. So I like that um, aspect. Um, characters are all likable to a point. I think I found some that were just irritating. Um, but um, not necessarily bad. Um, I found Daphne's mother to be a little irritating because she doesn't seem, and in fact, Daphne's parents in general just irritated me. Um, the parents in general irritated me because they are so out of touch, it seems, with, you know, with the world in general. They are so caught up in their, like, vampire hunting, um, I guess, um, that they kind of forget the fact that, hey, you've got a 17-year-old daughter that you're taking with you on a ride-along who could very quickly end up, you know, either extremely badly um, wounded or dead. And you don't seem to care one way or the other, you know. So why did you have to begin with if you're not with your kid? Why, why have a, a, a child you're not going to have that kid? Um, and and Tyson is a complete case, um, it seems. And I mean, okay, and, you know, a lot of the rant turns out to be accurate. Um, he's just a good case 
half the time what he says doesn't um so that kind of irritates me but um yeah anyway that's my little rant over uh, i'd rather not rant any more about that um as a YA book, this it does with some pretty serious say. <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I mean, dealing with three. You've got Tyler, Daphne, and um, Kiki. The the Daphne ending up with, um, and all three of them have got serious. Um, what I would call possibly call abandonment issues. They are they want to get their parental approval, but they're also of this mindset that oh well they don't seem to care about what I want, or they don't seem to care about me as a whole. Um, and I mean okay, to a point it makes sense but it does get a little bit old after a while. Um, it's very well written. I will say that um, Miss Moroni did a very good job with this book. Um, she's apparently written uh, three other books, at least at the, according to the About the Author page here. Uh, she's written three other books, Uninvited, Reveal Revealers, and um, devoured for teenage readers, and then there's a series she did called The Magic Repair Shop for younger readers, so preteens, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, this this book was a lot darker than I thought it would be, um, and it's, I mean, it's fun. It's a fun read, but um, yeah, I mean. Likeable characters, interesting plot concept. The plot itself is well executed. Um, deals with some pretty serious issues, I would say. Um, and in general, I think it's a book that you don't even have to like vampire books to read this one and enjoy it. You know, it's it's not. You know, I mean, it's about. I just want to see if I can find a page number here. It's a little over 200 pages. Uh, 250, 200. It's about. Actually, uh, it's about 240 pages here. Now, generally speaking, it's not heavy. I mean, it's it deals with some some serious stuff here and there, but it's not kind of beaten. You're not getting beaten over the head with it. It's a book that you can read and have fun with. You know, it's it's heavy enough that it keeps you invested, but it's not heavy enough that you um that you hate every minute that you spend reading it. So um. Yeah, I would I would definitely recommend this to anybody. You know, you don't have to necessarily like vampire fiction to enjoy this, but um, obviously that helps. But it's not necessary to really like them. Um, I would I would recommend this for any audience, uh, really. So yeah, those were my thoughts on Slade. If you've read the book, please let me know what you thought of it. And in the comments section, and um, yeah, let me know if you liked it, if you didn't like it, why or why not, and um, yeah, you can also leave general thoughts on the video if you uh, feel so inclined, and um, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.